Friendos, welcome back. Hey, Static and Rhino and Evan and Proto. I hope to finish up the last door today. Um, although, <laughs> today is headache land, apparently. I, I, the air conditioner is just murdering me. I, I hate the air conditioner. I can't wait until we're in the new place and I don't have to sit right underneath the air conditioner. And if I want to do something, it's just, it's right, it's here. Okay. But anyway, the last door. I hope all of you are unmelted. I haven't even gone outside today. I had no intention of doing that. I was gonna order uh, sushi for lunch. And so then I would have to like open the door. But my sushi place is closed on Sundays, which is bullshit. Rainy, it's gonna be rainy soon. Oh, sorry, for three days, you must wait. Oh God. I couldn't even get up this morning. I, I got up and I transferred to the couch and then I slept until like two. I don't know, I just felt I just felt real shitty today. Today this has been this has been, this has been a terrible weekend. I'm really hoping that next weekend is amazing because I'm suffering this weekend, you know? It's like penance, pre-penance. I don't know. Alone amongst these dead stones. A non-Newtonian fluid. I'm- I'm happy for you. <gasps> Only then will you be ready. To complete your journey, Mr. Ashdown. I love this logo. Every time I look at it, I just get happy. I think I can remember. It's terrible screech. But it was not that of an animal. There was something human in it. A desperate cry for forgiveness. breathing. They found me on the beach, unconscious. Clutching the piece of wood that had saved me from drowning. When I at last awoke, the letter was waiting on my table. Lieber Wakefield, I write this letter in my last moments of lucidity. I've not received word from you since I regained consciousness, but I'm confident that you will soon return with information that's crucial to our investigation. The bravery that you now demonstrated in the face of these latest discoveries is worthy of my most sincere admiration. I must now ask you for yet more courage. The doctors were unable to determine the cause of my sudden illness, nor have they found a cure. I've not much time left. 
My greatest regret is that I must abandon you to the difficult tasks that lie ahead. I implore you to persevere now that we are so close to finding an answer. The professor's documents were fi filled with references to a place of dark legend. The Crone... Crone Madan? An ancient statue sanctuary on the island of Ellis Moor. The exact location of the Crone Madan has been lost, but the professor believed that its secrets may explain why his experiments met with such disastrous results. You must find this place, my friend. I do not need to remind you to exercise the utmost discretion. I have complete trust in you. I knew he was gonna die. Always your friend, Johan Kaufman. Hey, lady. With Kaufman gone, I found myself lost, my life suddenly devoid of meaning. I was as though my friend had writ- it was as though my friend had written a letter to a person who no longer existed. Weeks passed, maybe months. I didn't count the time, but the day came when I realized there was no other option. To honor my friend's memory, I had to keep looking. I had to find it, Jeremiah DeVitt. Wherever he was. I can see the island in the distance, Ellis Moor. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Hey, Samuel. I, I wasn't really... I should have been focusing on that a little bit more. I wasn't sure if what I was doing was doing anything. Like, it seemed when I didn't click that we were drowning worse. So I was trying to not lose the game, and that kind of made me not pay attention. I don't think that that helped. I don't think that was the case. According to Kaufman's letter, the legendary Kron Madan can be found here. As Kaufman emphasized, I must exercise discretion. For all I know, the playwright is watching. When will you be back? Tomorrow at first light, probably. I'll be delivering supplies in the mail. I will see you then. As you wish, Dr. Wakefield. Good evening. Visiting. I hope you enjoy your stay. Nope. All right. Okay. Good evening. My name is Wakefield. I've just arrived on the island. You ought to speak with Lord Donnan, then. I beg your pardon? Lord Donnan. You should see him. Good evening. Welcome to Elias Moore. I don't really know how we're supposed to be pronouncing it, so I'm just going to make something up. Excuse me. A visitor! Visitors are most welcome in Elias Moor. Oh, yes, they are. Okay, we can go one of two ways. I guess let's go this way, because this way's first. The faint smell of fish and potatoes is drifting through the shutter. The fish smells slightly rotten. That's not good. I can still see the hills with the light of dusk. Uh, 
fence door locked. The gate leads to the village graveyard. It's closed and locked. The door is locked. Excuse me, are you Mr. Wakefield? I am. I have a message from Lord Donnan. Lord Donnan? To our most recent visitor, Mr. Wakefield. It's customary in Elias Moore to welcome strangers with hospitality. I should be honored if you would accept this invitation to join me at my manor for dinner and amiable conversation. Your new friend, Lord Donnan. Oh, this is like the Animal Crossing island I wanted, with a with a lake inside of the island. Ooh. Looks like the gate has been broken for some time now. A sign reads, The Wisdom of Silence. The windows are open and a light is on. An abandoned wheel. A peculiar cog is attached to it. Based on the cog's workmanship, it looks like it was part of a complex industrial mechanism, but someone has tried to fit it crudely into that broken bicycle wheel. How on earth did it come to be in a village like this? Is this Tomb Raider? Looks like the wheel has been lying here for some time. Uh, well, it's spelled... I don't know. It's got some accents that I'm not familiar with. That's locked. I'm sure we'll see it in a, in a minute again. Well, Dr. Wakefield, you're here on holiday then? Oh, yes, indeed. I've come to enjoy a rest somewhere far from the stresses of city life. I see. Well, if it's distractions you've come looking for, you've chosen the right time of year for it. These days, we celebrate a very special tradition of our kin, something unique. We call it the Festival of Reunion. Fascinating. May I ask, what does it entail? According to tradition, for the next three nights, the spirits of reunion leave the confines of the other side and roam the hills of... There it is. Elias Moore. I'm just going to keep saying it that way. We wear costumes and masks so that the spirits will not recognize us and make, the targets of their, and make us the targets of their mischief. Certain rites take place, too, but I should not bore you with the details. You shall have occasion to see for yourself. Okay. An exotic blend of black tea. A large statue of a person. It's so eroded by the passage of time, it's difficult to tell any specific detail. There are two engraved panels on the wall. They appear to be ancient, but I cannot decipher their meaning. An odd mosaic adorns the floor. It depicts two snakes biting each other. <laughs> Do those panels on the wall represent a classical theme? I cannot seem to place it. They're the panels of the first king of Elias Moore. In the days of the Druids, we worshipped the great god Lug, and our kings did right by those beliefs. Well, I, I cannot help noticing this remarkable mosaic. It looks authentic. Oh, yes, it is. Although some historians might disagree, we believe that this manor was built atop an ancient Roman villa. In our traditions, the double serpent represents a sentinel that protects us from the terrible threat hidden within itself. What? The statue is remarkable. May I ask what it represents? It is a hero and high king of our myths. 
not even going to try today. I'm too tired. You seem to be knowledgeable about Elias Moore's, Elias Moore's folk folklore. I should, be, I should very much like to learn about the island's history in more detail. <laughs> yeah, so the lips shouldn't really be a problem. It's just the tongue, right? Uh, it's true that we cleave to the ancient traditions. We haven't lost touch like some of those on the mainland, but I'm no expert. If you're really interested, you, t you should talk to Miss Foster. Please forgive my indiscretion, but you do you consider yourself a religious man, Dr. Wakefield? Uh, no. You seem so certain. Might I ask why? My faith is the belief that all phenomena can be explained through rational inquiry. Everything else is mere superstition as a result of fear of the unknown. I see. I got an achievement for that? Let's take a walk by the lake. From there we can see the beauty of the island as we talk and be the better for it. Ah, fine, I'll update my pronunciation. Hey, newbie. Don't worry, it's... We're, we're doing the high pony today. It's hot. The marsh in the valley is, for simpletons, a wellspring of frightful tales. The educated among us enjoy the tales as little more than distractions, knowing us safe from these visions. We know these stories to be nothing but superstition. But how can we be so sure that in the dense mist that emanates from the stagnant water we may not find passages to other worlds? What if the wails that drift from the reeds in the darkest of nights are the songs of those from our worst nightmares? Many of the gods that men worship for millennia now lie buried in the common grave of oblivion. In Elish Moor, we keep our traditions alive. Oh, they change, just as the times do, but they always keep their essence. These are our roots, Doctor. I want to talk to you. I want to look at stuff and solve puzzles. I must now take my leave, as my presence is required to start the rites of reunion. Feel free to continue your walk on your own. The village can be found just beyond those hills. I'm going to abandon you on an island you've never been on before. Goodbye. As I mentioned earlier, you may wish to speak with Miss Foster. She's something of a resident expert on uh, Elish Moore's history. She can often be found working late at the school, the building right across from the quay. Farewell, Dr. Wakefield. It's been a pleasure, Lord Donnan. Oh, start. An old barrel lies stranded on the shore. A painted label reads mineral oil. It's sealed. Can I have some? No? Bummer. The router of the water of the marsh is murky and dark. Should I go this way? Can I go the other way? No. A broken old fence. I wish the designation to leave the current area was different than just the designation to walk out of the current frame. Excuse me. Hello, my name is Wakefield. Hi. What are you drawing on the ground? It's a symbol, not a drawing. Okay, what does it mean? It's the final truth that'll protect us from the marsh dwellers, but we're not allowed to say its name out loud. The Marsh Dwellers? Who are they? They're scary. My Aunt Kathleen says they were really bad people. You'd never see them, but you'd hear them in the reeds. They try to take you in there with them. That's why we can't come here alone. We always have to take someone with us. Hey, okay, bye. A 
huge hole lies in front of me. An ominous, chilling draft issues from within that sends shivers down my spine and makes me very uneasy. To a superstitious mind, it might seem like a passage to another world. This place appears to be the rem remnants of an ancient temple to some unknown deity. Laments in the Deep. small mausoleum. The door is a small slot. I might be able to peer through it. Inside, a candle provides dim light. I can make out a statue of a hooded man. I can also hear someone whispering. No, I can't die yet. Not without knowledge. Is it so terribly unthinkable to truly understand the gods? How can we live only on faith? No, shut up! Knowledge is what I pursue, not faith or assumptions. No, no man can face death believing there is nothing on the other side. Yes, yes, you're right. Now I understand. Hey, the cell reception in there is just amazing. Please don't make me read the whole thing again. I shouldn't have clicked into this. I'm sorry. Okay, good. In the middle of the graveyard stands an old alder tree, which the locals call a fernog. Many lanterns hang from it. I do not know for what purpose. The epitaph on this gravestone is written in Gaelic, the shadows cast by the lanterns only making the characters more mysterious. The man hides his face behind a fox mask. He murmurs something in unison with the others. A muted pair at prayer I cannot quite wait make out. Is this Night in the Woods? Are we playing Night in the Woods? The woman hides her face behind a bull mask. A man, his face hidden by a wolf mask, stands in the middle. There's something familiar about him. Deer. Badger. I believe they were burying mirrors in a hole in the ground. What a peculiar tradition. No matter the strength of structure, all things succumb to time, but whether it was the ages or something else that ravaged this place, I cannot say. An empty doghouse. Nothing has slept here in many years. An old rowboat filled with stale water. Something sticking out of the water. A worn-out umbrella. It doesn't look like it'll rain anytime soon, but there might be a purpose for it.
trash bin filled with papers. There's a drawing on one. The trash can had something inside of it. Beautiful. This is a child's drawing. There seems to be a village, a lake, and some sort of creature. The windows are open, letting a chilly draft inside. Good evening. To what do I owe the pleasure? I'm a busy woman, as you can see. My name is Dr. Wakefield. I've come to Elish Moor to rest for a while. Lord Donnan said that I might, that I might find you here. Have you, met our, have you met Lord Donnan? It's been so long since I've seen him in the village. I hope he's well. No, I'm not doing this. I was, no, I'm not doing this. Welcome to the island. So have you not seen Lord Donnan lately? As far as I know, no one has seen him since... Well, it's been a few weeks. Now that the festivities have started, festival has started, maybe he'll be motivated to join us in the village. Did something happen a few weeks ago? Oh, sure, it was truly terrible. Here, in the his only child disappeared without a trace. He went off to play in the hills and just vanished. No one has seen him since. Good lord. And you say he's not been found yet? How is that possible? We all searched the island, but he was nowhere to be found. Did you check the giant hole? What can you tell me about Kieran's disappearance? Just that he was a restless child who loved exploring deserted areas. You might learn more from his classmates. His desk was in the back corner. What can you tell me about the, this curious festival? Well, it takes place when the constellation reunion is, visit, is visible in the sky. On those nights, dark things and spirits ride the winds that travel across the hills. As you may have already seen, at sunset the, villager, the villagers don masks. They do this so that the spirits will not know them or carry them away to the depths of their underground caves. There was a group of masked people at the graveyard. Was that part of the festival? Yes, that was one of the first rites of reunion, a very important one. As I said, people dress up to protect themselves from those that will come, but this is not enough. Since the mirrors they've looked into while changing know their identities, they bury them next to the old Fairnog. The roots of this tree grow in both worlds at the same time, so they keep the witness mirrors safe. Lord Donnan said you're an expert on the island's folklore. He said that, did he? Well, I wouldn't call myself an expert now, but I've lived here in uh, Eliash Moor longer than most, and I've heard my fair share of stories about the other side and its people. May I ask you a question, Miss Foster? Do you know the meaning of the word Kronmedan? Yes, it's a very unusual word, very much indeed. The Kronmedan is the sanctuary of the Crooked One. It's a cursed place, the dwelling of the devil. I recall it from the tales that I heard as a child. Of course, our elders only made up those tales to scare us and protect us from harm. Would you tell me the story of the Kronmedan? There's a hole in the ground up the hills, not too far from the village. A hole so dark and deep you'll not see the end. Folks around here believe there lies an old serpent at its depths, ravenous for flesh, the Crooked One. Long ago, our ancestors threw livestock into the pit in the hope of placating the Crooked One's hunger. Though that tradition has not been practiced for some time, so perhaps it would be best if you did not approach the hole. It is said that the last heir of the land, uh, laid send, once defied the crooked one by approaching the rim with an iron amulet in her hand. It's general knowledge that beings from the other side detest iron, so the cursing and the shouting of the young laid send received no immediate answer. But a few nights later, the laid send house was consumed in a horrific blaze, putting an end to the old family. Okay, cool, bye. The pleasure was mine. Enjoy your time on the island. They'll dance around the burrow. Around the burrow they'll sing. It's cold inside as winter. Don't get too close. Don't get too close. Or else they'll pull you in. Is there other things that I could, like, mouse over in here? No. A paper with black circles painted on it. There's some kind of worm screw inside, the remains of an insect beside it, and some drawings engraved on the desk. I'll take the drive with me, it may prove useful. A shelf of handmade books with unfamiliar titles, most of them concern strange rites. A picture of a slender woman, apparently a goddess, wearing a black dress and having a murder of crows behind her. It's signed with the name Bad Katha Bad B B B B 
I do not speak Gaelic, clearly. All the villagers are gone. A bottle is floating on the water. It's caught in the seaweed just out of reach. I think there's something inside. A paper is rolled up inside the bottle. Gods remain silent as the fog settles. We may look for the king beyond the clouds, but find the queen with a fiery crown. A bottle tumbled and frosted by its time in the sea. Hey, Drazar. This seems to be Athena, goddess of wisdom, war, and the arts. She's dressed in armor, seeming ready for war. The statue appears to be very old. Its appearance suggests that it could date back to ancient Rome. The door's locked. The manor appears to be dark and empty. It's a safety bicycle. I still don't understand how they managed to keep balance with such small wheels. It looks quite new, but its chain is broken. I must find a way to- or I may find a way to wait, fix this chain. The noise of the swing gently being moved by the wind is the only thing breaking the silence. The mill wheel, something is preventing it from spinning. A strange mechanism runs from the mill wheel shaft into the building. It seems to be lacking a small piece. The cog is way too big to fit between the gears. Looks like they need something smaller and thinner. It seems the me mechanism works properly now. Now the water wheel is working. Oh, there's a pair of puppies outside. Kieran's playroom is written on the door in hand-painted letters. The door is locked.
Were you Kieran's friend? He was nice, but he didn't want to play much. He was mostly for going into the hills by himself. Oops. Nope, that's not what I wanted. Was Kieran not scared of the Marsh Dwellers? No, he said he'd seen them and that they were not as scary as Aunt says. I think that's why they took him. You think the Marsh Dwellers took him? Yeah, for sure. Before he disappeared, he said he found a treasure, a disc with a beautiful drawing. But he took it from the old house in the hills. Maybe the Marsh Dwellers wanted it. I found this at the drawing in the school. Is it yours? That? No, Kieran painted it a long time ago. The drawing is Kieran's? There could be a clue here of his whereabouts. Is this the village? Yes, and the Farinog tree in the graveyard. That tree gives me the chills these nights. On reunion, they got them little lanterns on it, and they look like evil eyes staring into you. What's this? That's the burrow of the hill. The one up there, but you can't get too close. The crooked one sleeps at the bottom. What about these buildings? Don't know, never seen them before. What's this? That's the crooked one. They say a villager defied it, and the next day her house was burned to the ground. They say it was the crooked one paying her back. That's the house where Kieran found the treasure. Do you know how to get there? Sure, it's easy. Thanks. A wicker statue sporting a pair of animal horns. The twi twigs look fresh. Oop. This must be the house that the child was telling me about. Kieran was here just before his disappearance. A mailbox. The envelope is very old. It's stamped returned, and there's a letter inside. My dear cousin, I'm doing poorly. I would ask that you not call upon me here at Elia Eliashmoor. Not now, not ever again. Please keep Grandmother's ring. I believe that she would have wanted you to have it. Yours faithfully, Bridget. There is something else in the envelope. It's going all right. It's still hot as hell out. You know, live in the dream. A small, thin steel ring. Still never actually, shocker, I've never seen the Wicker Man. I know we're all very surprised. A metal trap door, it seems to lead to some sort of basement. I think this basement might have once housed a library. It looks like it was not burned as badly as the rest of the house. Even so, little here remains intact. Remains of the books scorched by the fire. Most of the pages are ashy or blackened, so the text is illegible. A common carpenter's brace. A tool like this would be used for drilling holes in wood. This table has been upended. An ornate chest inside is untouched by the fire. It was probably opened long after the inferno died down. There's a diary inside. It's signed Bridget Laidsend. Several pages towards the end are missing. August 7th, 1801. Words cannot express the gratitude that I feel for Aunt Mare's request, or Aunt Mare's bequest. May her dear soul rest in peace. This house is just what I needed to still my nerves after the exhausting pace of life in Dublin. 
10 September 1801. I would not have thought to find such a remarkable library hidden away in the basement. It includes several magnificent tomes on the most picturesque customs of our land. 23rd September 1801. I found, I found Aunt Mare's diaries next to an odd iron disc, but the contents of the diaries were appalling. What could have happened that dear old Aunt Mare would write such things? The damnable place that she speaks of, I must know if it really exists. I'm resolved to investigate our family's crypt. It would be prudent to wait until dusk before traveling to Northern Cape so as not to be seen. 25 September 1801. The abbey was in such a state of decay that it was nearly impossible to find the mural painting in the dark. Fortunately, a dim light happened to shine through a gap in the wall, illuminating the face of the sentinel. I believe Aunt Mare's iron disc is needed to open the secret passage. 10 October 1801. Is it the legacy of the Laidsend? I can stand to bear it no longer. Fire will put an end to this blasphemy, cleanse the land of our family's curse. And should the fire prove insufficient, may this testimony serve as a warning. Miss Laidson must have found something abhorrent in her family's crypt. Uh, if I could find out what it was, I may learn more about the crone, madame. My intuition tells me that I must act tonight or else it would be too late. It looks like some sort of makeshift bed. Was Kieran sleeping in this terrible, lonely place? The side of the basement seems to have collapsed during the fire. The wicker statue is burning. Who did this? I feel like I should have had water on me. Wait, where am I? I'd rather not interfere with traditions I don't quite yet understand. Only darkness. I cannot hear or see a thing. The wicker statue stands like a silent guard. Its presence makes me uncomfortable, as though I've trespassed on forbidden grounds. This must be the old abbey that Bridget Layson described, described in her diary. Could the Cronmadon be here? Bridget mentioned a dim light, but I see only darkness.
The dome appears to be Roman in origin. It's in better condition than the other ruins. The ring fits perfectly on the chain. I'm sorry to use Bridget's grandmother's ring in such a manner. Slightly confused how that's the solution, but okay. Still, maybe now I can get the bicycle to work. These tires are too threadbare. I don't see how I can ride it safely, but at least the chain rotates. What was that sound? I don't know, what was that sound? The Roman statue has been thrown down and replaced with a wicker one. The Roman statue lies shattered on the ground. To destroy such an ancient statue, could this really be part of the festival? Can I go inside yet? The door is locked. The manor appears to be dark and empty. I may be able to drill a hole in the barrel using this brace. Now that there's a hole in the barrel, I, ha I just have to push the bottle in a bit and I manage to fill it with oil. The drawing of some sort of spiked circle. Is it the sun or something else? The child that I spoke with earlier seems to have left his mask here. There's a ribbon hanging from it. Oh, you done fucked up. The ribbon has flown away. No?
come on. I can see a lighthouse in the distance. That's the ribbon that was snatched by the wind. Get it. There you go. A red ribbon. I think it was part of the child's mask that was left behind in the hills. No Molotovs here? Fine. It may have provided the light that Bridget spoke of in her diary, but the lamp is off. I wonder if it's been abandoned. What a ghastly custom. This wicker man is in the shape of a hangman. This tree looks like it's been dead for a long time. No one is answering. Really? We're knocking? Since when have we done that? In what world? Someone is inside. Maybe I can make some kind of noise to attract their attention. A wide copper pipe runs from the tower to the ground. It's covered in salt and seaweed. <laughs> It sounded like it attracted someone's attention downstairs. A drip of water left unchecked has ruined the mantle and collected into a small pool. A few logs and cords of firewood. Good evening. Would you happen to be the lighthouse keeper? My name is Wakefield. Stranger. And what would he want from me? Uh, I'm a visitor to Elias, Elias Moore. The, the, the... This lighthouse caught my eye. And since it's dark, you thought it to be abandoned. Well, it's not. Even though I can barely see a thing, this is my house. Why is the lighthouse lamp not lit? Is it not dangerous for the ships? Do not let it concern you. Many years ago, the sea lanes were altered to avoid this coast. Now it's rare indeed to see a ship in these waters. After the accident, the lighthouse was never repaired. You say you had an accident? What happened? I was checking the lenses. Because of the failure looked so very strange, and I was worried. All of a sudden, the light must have turned on. I was blinded and can see nothing but fleeting, sh fleeting shapes ever since. Was there a failure in the lamp's mechanism? Precisely that. One stormy afternoon, I suddenly heard a strong noise up on the light room. The clockwork mechanism had stopped working, and the lamp was off. I'd never seen a failure like that. I couldn't get the lighthouse working again. And nobody else tried to fix the lamp since? No, not one in the village is ever interested. For them, the more isolated the island is, the better. They don't care about ships or accidents, especially Lord Donnan. He sees anything coming from outside of the island as a threat. Do you know anything about the disappearance of Lord Donnan's son? A tragedy it was. A strange one, but a tragedy nonetheless. 
What was so strange about Kieran's disappearance? I just find it a bit suspicious that it happened so close to the reunion. It's too easy to be keeping secrets during the festival, being how everyone's afraid of leaving the village those nights. What do you mean? Look, folks around here are too gullible. They'll do anything to protect themselves from these strange fears. They'll not eat corn, nor drink milk, or they'll dig graves for their mirrors. And of course, they'll avoid standing near a Fairnog too long, because though the fiends cannot touch the tree, they're attracted to the smell of its resin. But surely it's all nonsense. Look, it's really easy to prove it all wrong, just don't follow the rituals. You're a stranger to our ways, but have you seen any of the things I mentioned? Well, I did see a group of people in the village burying mirrors. Exactly. What do you think would happen if you unburied those mirrors? That a band of goblins would come out of the marshes to steal them? Nothing but nonsense. What of Kieran's disappearance, then? Well, I'll admit I'm not too sure what happened to the boy, but one thing I am sure of, this festival of reunion is nothing but a farce. And it would be just so easy to prove it. Might I go upstairs and see the light room? Even though the lamp's off, I should like to take a view of the surrounding countryside. Well, I don't think you'll see anything, really, but if you're so interested, yes, I guess you may. Thank you for the pleasant conversation. The small stove hardly manages to warm such a spacious room. A portrait of a bearded ship's captain done in oils. The varnish has darkened his features considerably. The lighthouse's lamp, surrounded by eight large lenses. It's off. Looks like the lighthouse's electric lamp battery slot. It looks like the lamp is lit by some sort of electric switch. However, its battery is flat. Perhaps I can find a way to recharge the battery. I know, right? We just need a... Call my, uh, call that YouTube restorer. A thick layer of mist covers the sea out there. The clockwork mechanism that causes the lamp's reflector to spin. However, I think that something is missing. It could do, it could do with some oiling as well. There's a little hole in the tank and the oil's leaking. The mechanism will not work properly unless I fix it. The cog was the missing piece of the mechanism. I've replaced it. However, the mechanism is still too rusty to move. Really? That's how we're going to do that? Now I can oil the mechanism without worrying about it leaking. The cog was the, uh... The mechanism has been well oiled. It was easy to wind and now it's back to life. Okay... Even though the reflector spin mechanism is working, the lamp is still off. ceiling is stained with humidity. It cannot be. I never thought I'd hear the rhythm of my beloved lighthouse working again. You don't know how grateful I am. For years, I've longed to hear those marvelous sounds. Memories of better times. But the light has yet to be lit, I'm afraid. Ah, that battery. Have you got it charged already? I used to have a crank I'd used on it every night, but since the loss of my sight, I've lost track of it. I guess let's go ride our bicycle then.
Now that the bicycle is fixed, if I attach one of its cogs to the battery's dynamo, I may be able to provide it with a charge. So, this is what we're doing, but we fixed the hole in the side of the thing with a rag. I managed to charge the battery by attaching the dynamo to the bicycle's cog. Hopefully the battery has enough charge. The lighthouse is working properly again. With luck, its light will now help me find the mural in the old abbey. The wicker man has been set on fire too. Who keeps doing this? I didn't even have matches this time. The rope gave way just as I passed. You know... Basically. Or something is. Yeah. The light has revealed a mural painting on the stones just as it, just as it did for Bridget nearly a century ago. According to the diary, the light from the lighthouse revealed the eyes of the sentinel. A pair of evil eyes seemed to glitter in the dark. Okay. The mouth of the sentinel is wide open. What do you want me to do about that? Uh, like, I can't even... Not sure what button is unzip trouser trousers. Well, I don't think we're done here. Okay, so we need the 
disc in order to get in there. But I don't have the disc, and I think it's in Kiernan's room. But I don't know how to get in that. I am out of tools. Let's check the village. I'm expecting there to be a jump scare in there at some point. I'm not too sure about this. Well, then why did you do it? was that? Yeah, I don't know. Nothing looked different. Although I guess we didn't double check the graveyard. But it seemed like it was in the house, so I don't understand why. Huh. The mirrors are completely shattered. Why would that masked man do this? I don't know why I'm getting so confused by the layout of this area, but I am getting very confused by the layout of this area. Seems to be heading east. Well, there's how we get in. An ornate lever is built into the wall. A doll's theater lamp is spinning around. Celestial bodies made out of paper.
A painted man-sized wooden doll. It represents a king. A painted man-sized wooden doll. It represents an old lady. The stranger's mask is lying on the floor. Something is underneath the mask. An old iron disc. A drawing of a spiked circle is engraved in it. I can hear something wandering in the dark. I can see a, a deformed shadow in there. Writhing and fidgeting. I cannot get any closer. Okay. I guess I, I'll just go. Thanks. Now this statue is burning too? Is someone following me? The hidden entrance is open now. What was that sound? Eh, I'm sure it's fine. Wait, was there something else out there? In the back? No. The symbol looks familiar. A spiked circle. It could be the sun. A statue of Madonna, but something's off. I can't tell what, though. The tunnel descends deep into the earth. Will I find the Laidson crypt at the bottom, or something? Dear God, I'm reeling. Kaufman, my friend, your faith in me was misplaced. I cannot. No, I will persevere. This looks like the pictures on the desk, the picture on the desk. A small coffin half rotted away. This coffin is covered in ashes. A spiked circle is engraved in the bare stone. This coffin does not look quite as old as the others. This, this niche is empty. Some old pages lie haphazardly on the coffin lid. It's as though they'd been dropped here from the upper hill long ago. They bear faint notes written in a trembling hand. Down in this unholy burrow, in the feared crone Madan, our worst nightmares crawl and die. Resting down here are the dauntless, those who dared enter the lair of the snake and the bird. Each of these men and women crossed the path between. They walked through the mist to the other side where the ultimate truth screams in terror. And then they returned. These are my ancestors. Amongst the dead stones of the Kronmadan lie the proud laid send reduced to something far worse than dust or ashes. Could that blasphemy in the coffin be Antmare's true legacy? No, I shall not accept this fate for myself. Open it up. The engraving on the coffin is so badly eroded that the name is barely readable. Mare laid send.
Well... Oh, there we go. I was like, can I hear footsteps? I can't tell. Seekers of truth will sacrifice their wisdom. So to open the way to where the Fairnog blooms. Your offspring we welcome, its hidden threat. Only the light of your sign will carry its purge. Hey, we found him. David? Okay. All right, I think I have one more episode in me. I just have to take a quick break. I will be right back and we'll finish it up. Hang on. Okay. Oh no, that sucks, Frodo. I mean, if you still want to hold out, I will not be a I will not be offended. Oops. Good one. 
previously on The Last Door. After Kaufman's sudden death, Dr. Wakefield travels to the island of Elias Moore to search for the ancient Kronmedan, a supposed path to the other side. He discovers the island inhabitants hide a terrible secret. They instill primordial terror in ritual subjects for them to cross the door and come back as hideous abominations. Wakefield is himself subjected to the ritual and transported to an endless land of fog, where he finally seems to meet his missing patient, DeVitt. Oh, oh, I gotcha, I gotcha. He must be stopped. Hey, Grid. Is there any way you can fill my water bottle for me? I did just get up. I'm so sorry. I love you so much. It tastes better when you do it. Dirty man. Sorry. We've not come this far. To see our work ruined now. We left the black we left the black waves of that sea behind and walked through the mist. At times, gusts of winds parted the mist, revealing a barren landscape under a dying sun. Thank you so much, Grid. I appreciate it. I know. He's got a- Oh, you put ice in it? Oh, you're so good to me. Damn. Thank you. At first, I could not contain my many questions, but DeVitt's only reply was a grave silence. Eventually, I lapsed into an uneasy quiet and resolved to follow my patient, I knew not where. <laughs> we wandered through the vast desert without any apparent goal. On occasion, vague shapes appeared in the distance, crumbling towers and abandoned cities lost amongst the rippling dunes. Are we playing Journey now? The passage of time lost its meaning. I traversed that world all my life. All the world's life. Our journey was eternity. Then, the man at my side, whom I'd followed for so long, stopped. He spoke for the first time. We're all- we are nearing the threshold. It's the starting point, Doctor. The first place to look. I will be waiting on the other side. Remember this. I will not be here forever. Darkness will light your way, but then you will not be alone. What could my companion have meant? The threshold. I knew of this. Strange memories returned to me. Okay, it's fine. And those cryptic words, darkness will light your way, it was not the first time I'd heard them. They were from a dream, a terrible dream, when I had begun to follow the trail of my missing patient and taken my first steps to uncovering the secret world of the veil. In this place, the ancient shadows created by human reasoning tremble in sheer terror. Its name is... Ja Elathal, the Last Curtain. The scorching light of this dead sunset bleeds through my petrified fingers. My eyes burn, I feel them melting like candle wax.
These ruins built by beings long forgotten grant access to the last threshold. You are welcome to enter the ruins, but you will need to find your own key in order to reach the threshold. Look to the sky. It reaches to the earth, but it will never meet it. Can you see the magnificence of this infinite horizon? The cold, unattainable, all-embracing darkness. Oops. This is the outer limit of the threshold. Not far from here, the black waves of truth wash upon the veil that covers human eyes and it falls apart. There is no death but rebirth. There is no void but awakening. A path winds into the forest, but these trees are too dense for me to go any further. Raise your arms, for the wind calls our name. The hour of uh, the hour has come for us to take flight one last time. A light is on inside, but I cannot see the room clearly. Rocks have been piled against the wall as if to conceal something. The ground is soaked in blood. Black feathers are strewn about. What happened here? An old gramophone. There's no disc. Alright, just kidding. Let's go back inside. The pendulum strokes are sickly slow, but they seem to keep time in this place. Diffuse gray light seeps through the glass. Barely any light is entering. A silhouette of a strangely shaped head. Paintings lack any form or composition. They're uniform shade of the purest black imaginable. There's something inside the birdcage. It looks like some kind of root. It seems to have a human shape. Think. There's something inside the cage, a shadow staring at me with dead eyes. I can see something in it, no, through it, as though I were st staring into a dark void. Off in some remote distance, colorful shapes flow in seemingly impossible patterns. Jeremiah DeWitt, Edward Street, 24, Westminster, London. Correct. I should see Stalling and send it. Set the plan in motion. But what then? Lead my old friend through this dangerous journey? The shadow is gone. There's something on the cage floor. A rusty key. The cage is open and the shadow is gone. Oh no, are the internets shitting? It 
it's not me. So many tests were needed to find it, but now that we have... So much suffering, so many deaths. For what? What have we attained so far? The words of my father. So much has happened because of him. Alexander swears that this time we will succeed. That the Hupo will undo all of our mistakes, free us from the terrible, haunting gaze. But should we not accept the consequences of our actions? All these books, their secret knowledge concealed for generations, waiting for some fool to unveil it all again. A small bird that managed to lead the others through the treacherous fog, Raymundus chose an apt name for the compound. This letter, Vedete Neskiskiat. It will be enough, I think. It's time to send it. I'm just not sure that it's the right thing to do. Link, get down! The shadow has vanished. A slate disc. It's made of something like slate. A large crack in the wall. A few rays of un unearthly, light, unearthly light stream through it. When I put the disc on the gramophone, it started spinning on its own. Wait, is that a melody coming from the house? I don't need to cover the root with blood. I wish there were more ne negative options. Like, no, you don't need to do that, idiot. Look, it got me an achievement, okay? It's just the shadow of the lynx projected onto the wall. A lynx. I took it for a stuffed lynx at first, but I think it's actually made of wax. Oh my, I accidentally broke off a piece of its mouth. Did that just move? The wax lynx is now missing half its jaw. It's, I swear it looks like the root moved. Okay, good. The hatch is locked. Oh, there's a dead cat on the floor. I think it's rotting. It's her eyes are missing. There's something on the floor beside her mouth. Why did we check the genitalia of the rotting cat? Why did we feel the need to do that? Why did we need to sex the dead cat? Poor thing. I can honestly say that I don't want to know how she died.
Yeah, in the mansion in the beginning. Yep. I don't want to ruin the wax jaw in this blood pool. Oh. Okay. The gramophone has stopped. It seems I cannot get it to start playing again. Oh, yeah, it's definitely moving. The man at the entrance said that these ruins contain the access to the threshold, but I see nothing. Devit said, it is the starting point, the first place to look. Darkness will light your way. What did he mean? I see nothing but ruins. What was it Devit said? Darkness will light your way? It looks like a poster for a theatrical show, but it has neither a title nor a date. Perhaps it will prove useful. This reminds me of something. Yes, I remember once it was fashionable to make impressions of church brasses and other old inscriptions. The practice was to overlay the inscription with paper and rub it with wax. Yeah, I'd know that. Do we have an inscription lying around anywhere? path is blocked by sharp rocks. I cannot make my way through. I'm too tired to go on to keep searching what was promised us, but at least here I'm safe. Safe from the terrible hazard of peering through my own shadow.
Oh, right. Just kidding. You are of no worth to us anymore. There was barely any worth to begin with. Is this really the best option your supposedly brilliant mind could envision? A few meaningless words, a pathetic attempt of your guilt-shattered conscience to remedy the situation, and then you hope to wash the blood from your hands with a cheap exit. Look upon yourself, Anthony. See what you've become. Witness your only true legacy. Is that Mr. Beechworth? I see something through their shadow, slowly taking form. Anna, Anna, sweetheart, how did this happen? Too late. It's too late for us. But he still can choose. I, I have to warn him. That looked really, that seemed, that, that felt really weird with the pixel graphics. There's something on the ground near where the masked person was standing. It's a fragment of a broken mask. A piece of a Greek tragic mask. The ladder is broken. There are two curious symbols engraved on the wall. The 
This reminds me of something. Oh, we already we already read that. I get it. Thank you. So I I rubbed the wax jaw on the poster. I copied the symbols onto the poster. large sea stack just off the beach it seems to have a lonely demeanor there's a hole in the ground i've seen the gardeners digging holes like these when they need to transplant trees these trees are the only reminder of life around here it's as if they're guarding the statue Shadows linger in Zai uh, Jaliathal. Like insects trapped in a cobweb, at its center the spider lies in wait. No? An ancient oak tree stands tall above my head, casting an eerie shadow upon the building's wall. The shadow of a child is sitting in the corner, shaking in terror. As if peering through a keyhole, I can see things moving in the darkness. I like the style, but those themes... Does Lena approve of this kind of art? You've not lost your old sense of humor, Alexandra, even after what happened. Do you not recall that sight? I would erase the memory if I could. I find the painting makes it easier to bear. What brings you here, anyway? It's been years since we've heard from you. I thought our old cause had long been forgotten. Listen, Ashdown, what if I told you I found a way of crossing safely? dazzling light shines through the window. The shape of an eye is painted on the blackboard. It is well covered. I planted the root in the ground. Should I have gone in and then come back out again? Grand piano, it's missing a key.
Submachine? I've not heard of that. A colossus, born of rock and craftsmanship, relegated to the briny backwaters of this nightmare to the emotions of injury and despair. A grand piano, it's missing most of its keys. It looks like a piano key. There are two curious symbols engraved on the statue's stone. These statues, it's almost as if, if, as if they were the children of the standing stones that dot the horizon. They're less weather-beaten at any rate. Underneath the statue's hood, its face bears an evil grin. What is this? Shapes are forming through the shadow. I can't look away. I must see. Ooh, nice. Thank you. His name is Professor Wright. Right, yes. I recently had occasion to meet a disciple of his. He referred to himself as a psychotherapist. I had the impression that Wright's methods are more closely resemble those of my trade than those of yours. He's eccentric, indeed, but I think his thesis may be proven correct. If so, we might have found a way of reaching the threshold without attracting the attention of the custodian. A shortcut, you might say. A shortcut through the veil. The problem is in the method itself. It has some unusual requirements, and we would need a man of great sensitivity who knows the peril of reaching the door. A giant drawing of an eye, yet it looks more like Saturn and the rings surrounding it. Planks have been nailed over the windows, but to what purpose? There aren't enough planks to provide protection or keep the light out. The key fits perfectly. I remember some lessons from my youth, but I could not possibly play a melody without the assistance of a music sheet. Peering into one's own truth is forbidden. Were the snake and uh, and the bird of to meet 
ultimate ultimate madness would take what a i n h u m from would take in human oh inhuman from inhuman yeah inhuman in form form i don't know why that word is not the one that i the one that wanted to process hmm Ah, there it is. Missed it. Looks like a music sheet was left on the desk. It backwards. The melody seems simple enough. I think I could manage to play it. Do I have to play it backwards? Which one is A? I don't remember anything about the piano. All right. Or uh, C, rather. There we go. As I suspected, this is the melody that I heard at Wright's mansion. What? What's that? It's coming from another place. No, I don't want to do it again. No, I don't want to fight Essage. She's so hard. Not this way. I love scare effect. A terrifying shape looms where the piano once stood. It's being pulled on threads like some monstrous puppet. The threads converge on a distant point. Something is ta taking form there in the darkness. It's our old classroom, but that shadow... who? This is not possible. The shape beyond? The light? My fingers. No, don't come any closer. My hand! My hand! <laughs> Spicy. It's another mask shard, right? Yep. There are two curious symbols engraved in the stone.
Oh, I didn't mean to look at it again. I'm sorry. A tall figure stands in the woods. I might have taken it for a tree were it not breathing heavily. Inside, I, I can see things near the threshold, getting closer and closer. After what happened to Father Glynn, I think they'll shut down the school. Anthony, that thing we saw. I don't know what it was. But what about your father's diary? Myths, legends, superstitions with no basis in scientific observation. Anthony, talk to us. All right. My father discovered several ancient myths pertaining to the veil. They came from a variety of cultures and hence take many different forms, but they all say something similar about res what resides near the threshold. An ancient being that sleeps within the fog, protecting the door from intruders. A vengeful custodian. Ati! But no matter. At any rate, my serum was a failure. We got but a glimpse of what exists out there. Nothing conclusive. But what if the serum had worked? I don't know. As I said, I have no data. And those myths? What do they say? Well, those tales, they all say that if any intruder got too close and was discovered by what sleeps in the fog, then the custodian would be relentless. It would pursue the intruders and destroy them wherever they might hide. There would be few ways to protect themselves from its rage. Not sure what I can do about that. Okay, do I need to write this down? Do I have to do these in the right order? That's hard. I don't know how to do that without fucking up.
Oh, I get it. Okay, so I think we have to walk through the trees as we spell this weird word. Or not. a pain in the ass. Hey, Gibbs. That's the third one. This is the second one. Maybe we were just supposed to follow the second one? I'm confused. I was assuming we had to follow the trees based on these markings, but... All right, well, this one is the second marking. Oh, wait, no, it's not. Yeah, it was backwards, but I've also seen it forwards. Some of them aren't the markings that I have. Although I guess we got it's two of them in the backwards world, right?
But like, I haven't seen the second one. So I guess let's go past this. Oh, it's between the two trees. Oh, okay. It's between the two marks. I think. Maybe. Not that. No, not that. I don't get this. That's the first sign. That's not part of my thing. Wait, is it? I guess that's the last one. So we have the first one and the last one here. Yeah. This is the second one. This is the fourth one. Maybe, maybe, yeah. That's a good point. There we go. Thank you. Is this Divit? A shadow strongly resembling my patient stands in the clearing. I can see through it just like the other shadows. Four men are making careful preparations I know not for what.
This Captain Skid. David, are you certain he can guide us safely through the fog? His results are extraordinary, Anthony. It's the best chance we have of avoiding the gaze of the custodian. There can be no doubt that the captain survived an encounter before. He even kept a companion from harm. We'll finally see what lies hidden beyond the curtain. It's time. A huge statue of a mythical creature. It's a bird with the head of a wolf? Or is it a lion? The, the inscription reads 30 birds. An enormous black feather. Despite its size, it's extraordinarily lightweight. The summit rises above the fog, though I see though all I see is fog in an endless ocean of clouds. What's that noise? Something's out there. It's getting closer. 30 birds. Is he asleep? He is now. It's been so long. I'd begun to lose hope that he'd ever awaken. Were you able to speak with him? Anthony, DeVitt has forgotten everything. Everything. Good heavens. It may be for, our, for the best. Our research is likely to take some time. If he truly has amnesia, his condition will protect him until we're ready. But should we fail? Remember what happened to Hugo? Ashdown entered the Vale with full knowledge of what might happen, and we... We will succeed where Wright failed. We will use the serum to induce primal terror in a controlled environment. In one stroke, we shall overcome all of our obstacles. But when the time comes, we must have a means of guiding our dear friend back to us. There, he'll be safe. The fragment of a broken mask. An eyeless mask. It's similar to the one that I found in Alexander's safe house in London. The mask is eyeless, I cannot see a thing. A man is standing next to the open curtain. Thrilling ambience.
Hey, Ayanti, how are you? Welcome, Dr. Wakefield. Alexander Dupree? Yes, I've been waiting for you. We all have. I was in that pit. In Elias Noor. More. When suddenly I found DeVitt, but he disappeared. I journeyed through the fog and found myself here, but how is it possible? Elish Moore. Fuck you. I do not know that name. Many paths in our world lead to this place, Dr. Wakefield, and I only know a few. In some... Some mirrors. You'll see the truth leaking into our world, and in others, you see yourself. I knew you'd reach us at last. He was certain of it. He? The first founder of the Order. The Artifacts. Do you not yet know his name? Do you mean Mr. DeVitt? Truth can be hard to accept. Yes, Jeremiah gathered us all under the same rule. See that no one knows. We knew of the final truth which lay before the, beyond the threshold. This is what the playwright was commissioned to find, or committed to finding. This was Jeremiah's obsession. The first language, which is said to grant the power of creation. After our experiment at school, we realized that the path to the Ancient Ones was watched by a fearsome guardian. We needed a way to circumvent the inexorable gaze of the bird. I found Captain Skid, who'd met the bird and lived. We decided to use him in a test. It was a catastrophe. We eventually found the survivors, but their memories were incomplete. Jeremiah had fared the worst. He'd been left devoid of any memories that were related to our efforts. We were desperate to find a solution. Hugo tried and failed. And then Anthony and I miraculously came across a formula that had lain forgotten for centuries. At last, it was time to bring Jeremiah back into our ranks. That was nearly a disaster as well. I didn't anticipate Anthony's sudden madness or the extent of Father Ernest's decline. Mercifully, Jeremiah's life was spared, but something else was wrong. When Jeremiah reached me, he didn't remember everything. He'd changed. He told me that he was going to put an end to all this. He still means to acquire the first language, but he wants to use it to ruin our work. He's already crossed the threshold. Once he learns the final truth, none of this will ever have existed. The Order, the Door, or ourselves. You must stop him, Doctor. You must stop him before the curtain closes forever. The moment has passed. Now it's too late. We're all doomed. Listen, I did not play two and a half Dark Souls games to let the world continue badly. Once more, I found myself enshrouded in dense fog. Gradually, the fog dissipated, revealing a busy street in London. The mask that I had worn lay on the ground, melting like wax over the wet cobblestones. Dizzy and exhausted, I wandered the streets until at last I returned home. It seemed very small, as it always does after a long journey. As I removed my coat, I found a feather in one of the pockets, the same one that I had discovered before being engulfed by the black mass of the Simurg. With a jolt, I realized that it had not been a dream, and I was ashamed at how quickly I had deluded myself into thinking otherwise. I kindled the fire and placed the feather on the crackling flames. As it burned, I heard the distant calls of crows in the street. Despite the heat, I shivered. My patient and friend, Jeremiah DeVitt, had sacrificed himself. He'd accepted the consequences of his friend's actions and his own as well. 
he'd cross the threshold, leaving the veil through the red curtain of the truth, and forever closed the last door that had led to those horrors. But I had not found the strength to follow him. I could not take his place. I doubt that I'll ever learn the fates of those who remained. Those who are hopelessly trapped in Jalathal. Please let me do it again. My thoughts now turn increasingly to the last mission to which my friend Kaufman entrusted me. I must make sure that no one ever learns what we discovered. I wonder if they'll just let me do it again. Seems like probably not. If this is the credits, can I speed them up? Oh, come on. Interesting. Okay, so yeah, I didn't read it as we would be taking his place and sealing anything. I read it as if I just let him fucking go, then all of this is fixed. Listen, there's friendship and then there's letting a, a dumb idiot just take responsibility for his dumb idiot actions. Yeah, I would really like to go back and see if I can do it again. Or if I have to, hopefully, maybe I don't have to play the whole thing over again. I really enjoyed this. Um, I liked how... I don't want to say simple, because it wasn't simple like logically simple it was just i feel like it 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 set its own parameters and it followed its goal very efficiently the simplicity of the graphics i think supported the mood you know like the lovecraftian unknowable horrors Really, their fear lies in not seeing them. Um, we can we see pieces and shreds and ideas and concepts, but the the whole is canonically too much for the human brain to, you know, stay solid while experiencing. So, exploring that through the lens of such lo-fi art was really interesting. I really enjoyed it. I don't think they tried to stretch. I thought they were very simple and straightforward with the mechanics, with their puzzles. Yeah, they knew when to keep it in the dark. I thought the, the, the jump scares were extremely effective. I felt, I felt happy about them. Pecking on glass. Ting, ding, ting, 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 ting. I thought the sound design was great. Now what will really be the cherry on top is if they let me make that last decision again without having to replay the whole chapter.
The inner circle is gathered once again. A whole cycle has passed since the last playwright traveled to the land of shadows and fog. Now the mask with no eyes has chosen a new bearer. The path between worlds will be visited once again. And the veil upon human eyes shall be lifted forever. The playwright meets now. The custodian of the threshold. Ancient being guards the door of mist. May the playwright take its light and stand by its watch unnoticed. Four wisps of fog shall reveal the truth. The fire of dawn scorches through the barren desert. The austral flame shines within the dark forest. The pyre of Zephyrus glows in the dark ocean. The boreal embers brighten the dark sky. The playwright will stand in the center. And the curtain will be drawn at last. And then its eyes were open. Neat. Okay, so I don't want to, I don't imagine that we can do this again. Yeah, no. So we'll just have to imagine what the final, imagine what the, the other decision would have been or immediately upon close of stream, go read it up on the wiki. But yeah, this was a really good game. I really enjoyed it. I'd love to play some more point and click kind of stuff like this. It's just... It's a big dark spot in my personal repertoire of games that I've explored. Um, so yeah, I'll absolutely be looking for more things like this, if not just like this. <laughs> Point and clicks in general, if not Lovecraftian horror, pixelated specific ones. But yeah, thank you for the suggestion. I really appreciate it. I am going to log off because I am just tired as shit today. I promise tomorrow I will be a functional human for the whole evening. I swear it. But thank you so much for hanging out with me, and I will catch you next time. Everybody have a good night. Bye!